Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about the Volca drum and I want to keep this into a hopefully fairly short kind of pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses type of uh, discussion to keep myself from rambling too much. Um, I have it kind of in the context of a bunch of other stuff here as this is generally how I use it. Um, it can be used fully standalone and it's great for that and I think it's like it's a fun little kind of challenge. I'll take it with me and try to use it as just a groove box sometimes, but really that's not what it's intended for. It's intended to be a drum machine and a drum synth more specifically. Now the way I have it currently hooked up, uh, the model samples to the left here, I'm using this purely as a MIDI controller right now. This just allows me to trigger these sounds without my hand you know, covering the unit here. So I'm just doing the same thing that I would be if I were tapping these, but hopefully it makes for a better video if my hand is not covering the unit all the time. Um, and then over here, I'm recording into the black box. Now with the Volca drum, I do pretty much always use it in the context of these other devices, uh, like an electron sequencer. I've got some other electrons up here, uh, the black box to record or sample it, that type of thing. So I think that the Volca drum really works well in context of other gear. Um, if you're looking for a standalone groove box that kind of does everything, this probably isn't the one for that. Now, um, I think that in the in context of the range of Volcas, uh, I think this this could be the only Volca drum machine you have, no problem. Um, I think this also could be considered uh, like the Volca perk. Uh, this is the the percussion specialist, and so by that I mean that. It's not necessarily the best for uh, your, your kick drum and your bass sounds. It can do those, but there is also the Volca kick and the Volca bass, uh, which are more the specialists for those types of sounds. So I think that where the, the Volca drum really shines is in the higher frequency percussive sounds uh, like snares, hi-hats, uh, you know, rim shots, cymbals, that type of thing. So that's generally how I use it. I let something else be the kick drum. I let something else be the bass, uh, the bass line. And I tend to use this to focus more on those high frequency sounds. Now that said, it's no slouch in the bass category. I think it's just, um, it's, you know, it's just not as characterful as some other things that you, you might have available. But if you're, you're worried that this thing doesn't put out enough bass, well, don't be, because it, it definitely has that covered. So I'm gonna go through my list of strengths uh, these are the things that I think that the Volca drum does really well, and we'll talk a bit about each of these. So first off, this waveguide resonator section. This is basically an effect, uh, it's a send effect, that you can send not only each of the individual six sounds through, but each of these six sounds is comprised of two layers, so really it's 12 sounds total, and each of those layers can have an individual send to the waveguide resonator which is really cool. Um, and so the waveguide resonator, it's a physical modeling effect that's based on either a tube or a string. It's like saying, I'm creating a sound and I'm sending it through a tube or I'm sending it across a string and then getting recording whatever sound comes out the other end of that. Um, in practice, it sounds a bit like having a reverb and a delay kind of fused together into one thing. And it's very performable with these three knobs. Um, so I think the waveguide resonator is a lot of what gives the Volca drum its unique sound, and we'll explore that a little bit. Next is the concept of kits. So the Volca drum has drum kits separate from what they call programs, but we'd also call those sequences or patterns. Um, and you can save those things separately and manipulate them separately. And that's really powerful, especially if you're using an external sequencer, because it means that I can send it a sequence from something else, and then I can switch which kit that plays. So let me just demonstrate that real quick. Okay. So here's a sequence that I'm sending it from the model samples right now. Okay. And now if I go to load kit, I have 16 kits to pick from. All right. So here's six completely different sounds, but they're playing the same sequence of notes. Let's do another one. Here's some quirky weird shit. Okay, so that's cool. Now we can do the same thing internally as well. Like let's say I don't have an external MIDI controller or anything else connected to it. Um, if I go to load program, let's load, I don't know, this one. And hit play. Oops, let's try that again, load program. And now play. Okay, so here's some basic little, you know, thing I have in there. 
now let's do load. So I'm doing load kit this time. So same thing. So I think that is really one of the most powerful features of this, especially if you're thinking about something to use for kind of live performance or kind of like live hardware jamming, um, because that ability to just change your kit on the fly without changing the sequence playing is huge. And really that's, that's a feature of a lot more, a lot of kind of fancier drum machines, um, like really high end stuff. And there's not a lot of, I don't know if there's really anything in the more budget end of the category that does that. So I think this whole kind of concept of kits is, is a really strong feature of the Volca drum because not only can you use it with the internal sequencer, but also with any incoming MIDI. So let's talk about its synthesis capabilities. So if I pick a track here, I'm gonna do number six. So there's all this stuff jumping around on the screen. Um, first of all, I'm sending this through the waveguide resonator, which is changing it. Let's just turn that off. So we're just hearing the synth engine by itself. So um, basically the synthesis on this, you could describe as kind of digital subtractive synthesis. Um, and it ha has two different layers per sound. So basically what that means is that each one of these tracks is two different synth engines that are layered on top of each other. And you get to choose the mix of them. So kind of in its default mode here, we're working on both layers at once. Um, but you can kind of address each one of them individually. So I'm gonna first go into layer two and turn its volume all the way down. So now we're hearing just the kind of just layer one, which is gonna be a more simple sound. Okay, and let me make sure it's not going through the effects at all. Okay, so there's that. And now um, within each one, basically this uh, select parameter knob here is gonna cycle you through a whole bunch of different options. But if we look at just the, the source here, uh, so basically there's five total sources, which you could think of just as your oscillators. You've got a sine wave, you've got a sawtooth wave, uh, and then you've got three different noise oscillators, uh, which are filtered in different ways. They're low pass filtered, high pass filtered, and band pass filtered. So that's the kind of core sound that you have to work with. Um, so it's missing things like there's no square wave, uh, there's no triangle wave, you know, you only have those five to work with. Now, once you pick one of those, you then have different ways to modulate it. You have three different ways of modulating it. And, um, and then you also have your envelope generator. So you have definitely ways of shaping it, you know, once you pick your original sound. So right now, just on the sign. And then I'm gonna go through a couple options here. So let's see, am I? Oh, I'm on the wrong one, aren't I? Okay, I had the wrong thing selected. Let's go in here, turn this down, turn this all the way down. Turn this up. I don't wanna hear that at all. Okay, so starting with the basics, like here's a sine wave and I can pitch it up and down. And by the way, if I want that pitch to be quantized to semitones, there's an option to do that. You go into this menu, this QPI, and turn it on. There we go. So now it's displaying whatever the semitone value is. Okay, stick with C. And then if I want to make this sound more complex, I've got things like here's my envelope right here. If I want it to sustain a long time, have a slower attack. And then I also have my different modulation options. So when I hear the modulation is preset to pitch, it's not, you can't route it to anything else. Um, you can basically think of this as like an LFO set to pitch. And then you've got, yeah, your, your different envelopes to mess with, mess with that. C 
can get a lot of these kind of weird and wacky sounds, which aren't terribly useful, at least not for me. Let's go back to a more of a basic tone. Okay, so I think this is a good point to point out. Uh, if you want this to be, you know, more of a regular melodic synthesizer, this is where it has a weakness because the only envelope contr controls you have are attack and release. You're, so you don't have a full ADSR, you're missing the, um, the de decay and the sustain portions of that envelope. And also on the release, you know, you can hear it goes pretty long. It's a good second or so. Um, but there's no way of having the, in the release be infinite. Uh, so basically it means there's no way of making this thing drone indefinitely. And it being a you know drum or percussive synthesizer, that makes sense because you want your percussive sounds to be like a burst of sound and then you want them to generally fade fairly quickly. Um, and so it makes sense that they you know kind of put that built that limitation into here. But it's a good thing to point out if you want this to also be more of like a groove box where you're building melodies and bass lines and things on this. Um, you know, it can do it, but you have to be okay with those fairly short sounds. There's no way you're going to get a really long sustained sound. Now, the one exception to that is if I crank this over to the waveguide oscillator, turn my decay way up. So you hear that? I got my decay and my body to max, and now I can play with the tuning for just whatever pitch I want to hear. So notice we're still hearing the primary pitch of this, but then the waveguide is resonating at a different pitch. And this one you just have to kind of tune by ear. There's no way of quantizing it, at least not to my knowledge. Yeah. And you hear it starts doing some crazy stuff sometimes. So, yeah, basically, if you kind of dedicate your waveguide to this long, drawn out, kind of ringing out or resonating sound, you can get this synth to basically have a very long, you know, uh, it's like a long decay, basically, uh, type of envelope. The thing is, this waveguide is global to the whole thing, right? So I have individual sends per track, but anything I change on these three knobs affects the entire unit. Uh, so you're not going to be able to make certain things ring out and have other things uh, be quick if you're sending them all through the waveguide. So just be aware of that. Um, yeah, that said, it's not really designed to be a melodic synth, and so I think that's fine. If you're using this to paired with some other type of melodic, more melodic focused synth, I think you're going to have uh, you know, a, a good time and you're going to um, not mind that particular limitation. So um, let's look at the noise oscillators also, because I think the noise oscillators on this sound very good and are very useful. <laughs> so here we go. By sending this noise into the waveguide resonator, I've got this kind of two-layered sound, where basically all I'm doing is sending some high-pass filtered noise into this, and then this thing is resonating to make that like tink, that like sound. Okay, and keep in mind, we're still only using one layer of this. I've still got a second layer here, which I can turn up, and do something different with. too high. So yeah, there really is a lot of sound sculpting potential in the sense that you got these two layers. Each one has its own individual envelopes and such. Um, as well as individual sounds into the waveguide resonator. And the waveguide resonator is, it can be used kind of like a third oscillator, like you feed some energy into it and then it kind of self-resonates or self-oscillates uh, to create a different tone, which you can then tune with the tune knob. So really that's, you know, just from a single track on here, you have quite a bit of a kind of 
sound shaping, synthesis, sculpting abilities. And then of course there's six tracks uh, to spread that across. So in terms of it being a synthesizer, even though uh, you know there's some limitations, like you don't have a full ADSR, I think it really is uh, quite a lot of power um, that it gives you there. And I think the limitations are, they're, they're fun to work around. Like they're, um, they're things that challenge you to do things a little bit differently. You know, if you have a more traditional synth next to this one, you're gonna get a different workflow and a different result out of this one because you're gonna to have to find different ways of you know, getting sounds out of it. So I think, that's, I think it's a fun limitation, um, but just to point out, it is a limitation. Um, this also, like I said, it's basically a subtractive workflow in one particular mode. Let me go, let me turn layer two off again. Um, go back into layer one, turn off the effect send. So we're just hearing a basic sound now. Okay, so in one particular mode, it also is, it can kind of do some FM type sounds. So when I have the source set to sine wave and the mod set to sine wave, um, so here's my sound, okay, basic sine wave. And now um, if I crank up the mod amount, set a long release on it and let's pitch it down a little bit so if you're kind of familiar with FM you'll hear that me playing with this mod amount is getting into that kind of FM territory because I've got one wave uh, modulating uh, the frequency of another wave. Now you're missing all the other kind of traditional FM controls, you know, ratio and things like that. So it's like, I wouldn't necessarily call this an FM synth, but definitely if you like FM drums, you can get a lot of those same types of sounds out of it um, by playing with this particular mode. And contrary to a lot of FM synths, we can do that with some, you know, some different parameters too. Like for example, now I'm on sawtooth wave with that same sine wave modulator. Let's listen to that. Okay, and then send that into the waveguide resonator. there see it's it's finicky you have to play with it um, to get it but there's these points where you can get the waveguide resonator tune knob to kind of resonate with the pitch of whatever you're creating and it sounds awesome I don't know if you can hear that but basically the, the resonant sound uh, yeah I mean it's you can make it harmonize or match whatever your pitch is but you have to do it manually okay now talking about the built-in sequencer on this. Like again, I don't use it that heavily, um, but uh, there are some advantages to it if you do want to use it. So let's go here and load something that's in here. I don't know, we'll just see what sounds good. Okay, so I've got a fairly basic beat going here. All right, and now let's say I wanted to do some live jamming on top of this thing. Well, there's a couple of really powerful kind of sequencer little modes here. So one here is active step. I press this one. Now by default, the longest sequence you can have is 16 steps, but you can make it shorter, right? So now we're at 12 steps. Eight steps. And you can see I'm changing this on the fly while the sequence is running, right? You can even go down to a single step. But notice I'm doing this per, uh, per track, right? So let me go into like, let's see this track, for example. All right, so I'm gonna set all some of these to be a 12 step pattern. This one's got a lot going on. See, it's changing the vibe of it, because what I've done now is I've got four of my tracks are a full 16 steps in length, and then two of my tracks are only 12 steps in length, which means that they're getting out of phase and back into phase. Right? And when you work with step links that are multiples of each other like that, you can do some pretty cool stuff. So um, I believe that's called polyrhythmic, polymetric maybe. 
<laughs> I think so. Um, anyway, uh, basically suffice it to say, if you want to get more complex rhythms out of this, uh, that's a really strong feature, is using active step and changing the step length per track. And especially if you have some of them be like weird ones, like here's only three steps. So anyway, pretty cool. Um, now the other thing you can do is step jump. So I turn on step jump mode, and what this means is that I'm just repeating whichever step I hold. All right, so that basically lets you do rolls and fills, but even better than that, it can repeat certain steps, right? I love the step jump mode, it's super fun, and I would say if I'm using this as a drum machine alongside of a bunch of other gear, and I'm mostly kind of like busy playing the other gear, it's great to just leave it on the step jump mode once in a while with one hand, just reach over and, you know, touch a few things and make it, you know, kind of glitch out a little bit, and then you release and you're back to your regular pattern. So step jump is awesome, and this kind of combination of active step and step jump, both of those being on one drum synth, I want to say this is the only Volca that has both those features built in. Each of those is available individually on some of the other Volcas, but I don't think there's any others that have both. Um, I would have to fact check that, but anyway. Um, yeah, so I really like having both of those, and they're super fun. You also have other kind of good sequencer um, features that are like just powerful to have in any drum sequencer. You've got slices, which is like ratchets or beat repeat. You've got accents, which is basically changing the velocity or the, the volume of individual steps. Um, you've got muting, of course. Uh, so if you want to mute individual sounds and bring it back in, you can do that. You've also got choke groups. So if you want to do like hi-hat choking, for example, you've got that feature. So it's got kind of all the, all the basic and some more advanced features that you'd want to see in any drum sequencer. Um, so really, it is pretty capable. And compared to the rest of the Volcas, I think it is actually I think it is the most powerful of the Volca uh, sequencers. However, um, the main limitation for me at least is still that 16 steps maximum. This one also has no ability to do um, pattern chaining or song mode or anything like that. And so basically, you know, your the max length is gonna be 16 steps. So that is the reason why I mostly sequence it from an external sequencer, usually an electron one, um, because I just like my sequence is being longer. Like for me, 32 steps is kind of the minimum, and they often work in like 64, 128, you know, longer sequences like that. So that's that's kind of my gripe with all of the Volca sequences is sequencers is that max uh, step length of 16, and that applies here as well. Okay, another thing I want to um, point out with the, I mean, it's with the synth in general, but um, it relates to both the sequencer and the synthesis engine, is you have a randomize function, and that's super fun. So let's say I just want a bit of inspiration or I want things to be a bit weird. Um, I'm going to go ahead and randomize a pattern for this. So I'm going to say function randomize pattern. And now what this has done is just put down a couple random random uh, trigs or random steps for me. All right? And I can go through and I can do that with each one of these. So move this one, randomize pattern. This one, randomize pattern. Now I've just made a completely randomized drum pattern. Actually sounds kind of interesting. Um, and uh, now I can go in and do that same thing for each of the sounds, right? So let's say the sound's not that interesting, so let's go ahead and change it. And the randomize is per layer. So if I'm on this layer one, two, I'm gonna randomize both layers simultaneously, but I can also randomize each layer individually, which is really cool. Let's just do them both. Okay, so now we got this high frequency thing. Um, now, with this type of synthesis, you're gonna get a lot of random stuff that doesn't sound that good. That's just kind of the nature of it. Um, and so you, know, you might just kind of keep going through, trying different things. Like a lot of these wibbly wobbly sounds aren't that useful, I think. A lot of piercing stuff like that. Okay. 
Let's stick with that. Let's go step jump on it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, so randomize is cool. Um, I think I I use it sometimes as like a starting point to then tweak from there. Um, and yeah, I don't know it's fun. It's cool that it's there. Um, and it's the sequencer here. It does not have any sort of like probability or conditionals. Any of the fancy stuff I like in my electron boxes. So the you know, randomized pa pattern is kind of the closest you get to that. Um, it would be cool if it had probability per step and things like that. But, you know, again, this is the budget end of gear, so we're, we're, we're okay with some compromises here. So I think that pretty much covers uh, most of what I want to go through. Um, I want to point out a few other kind of weaknesses uh, of, of the device. Now, so I already talked about the 16 step limit. I think that's the primary weak, uh, weakness of the sequencer. And it's kind of a shame because the sequencer otherwise is quite good. Again, we have like slices and accents and choke groups and like all these other kind of things where you can make pretty advanced, uh, you know, beats and rhythms out of it. Um, it's just for me, with only 16 steps, it's just kind of not enough. It's not long enough. I like uh, my beat to vary more over time. Um, now, of course, you could do tricks like set your tempo to be half time. Um, and then use slices to kind of get back to a faster tempo. So there's things like that you can do, but it's just not necessarily the most fluid uh, flow for me at least. Um, now, the other, I think, big downside of this uh, is that there's no filters that you can control. Now, on the noise oscillators, they have built-in filters, low pass, high pass, band pass, which is great, um, but there's no way of like tweaking the cutoff amount or the, the resonance amount or anything like that. And likewise, um, all of the synthesis engine here, it's not going through a filter, you know, after you've created your sound. So like on the electron boxes I'm used to, um, for example, you know, you create your sound and then you send it through a filter stage. Uh, so if you have, if your sound has like high frequencies you don't like or something, you can filter those out. This does not have that. And I think it's something in terms of like, if I'm using it for sound design and synthesis, it's something I often miss. And so um, I, I will sometimes send this through an external filter um, or sometimes I will just choose to, you know, just change, change the sound design to try to get rid of those, those uh, frequencies I don't want. But I would say that if it had a filter, uh, you know, in the synth section, it would be easier to use, basically. So I think it's a downside that there's no filters, um, at least none that you can control in a simple way. Now also on the connectivity, there's no MIDI out and there's no MIDI through. That's just kind of makes it inconvenient to work with a, you know, a bunch more gear. Basically this has to be the end of your MIDI chain because there's only a MIDI in. Now on the other Volcas, there's a way to mod them to add a MIDI out. I don't know if that applies in this one as well, uh, maybe. Uh, the other thing is there's no audio input to this. And it would be pretty cool if there was, both for convenience of just having making daisy chains of gear, but also if you could send audio, external audio through the waveguide resonator, I think that would be super awesome because um, it just, it sounds cool. You can get some really unique stuff out of it. Um, another downside is there's no individual outs, right? We've got six tracks, but only a single stereo out. So now you do have panning control per track. So if you wanted to, you could pan some hard left, pan some hard right, and treat this as a dual mono output. And, and that, so in that sense, you do have individual outputs and you can select which track goes out of each one. So that's good. But if you want it to be stereo, um, then you, know, you just have the one output for all of these. Now again, in most budget drum machines, you're not gonna get individual outs, right? That's a pretty high-end feature. So it's not surprising that we don't have that here, but just to point it out, it is a con. Um, there's something I didn't really go through much yet also, which is in the synthesis section, you also have this kind of like hidden menu um, where you can get some more advanced effects. So we've got um, a bit crusher, we've got wave folder, we've got drive, which is like overdrive, uh, we've got panning left and right, and then we've got gain. Um, and then finally the QPI, that's the quick, uh, the pitch quantization. If you want to change this to be uh, working in semitone values instead of just, you know, kind of raw, a raw pitch knob, um, this is going to quantize you to semitone values. So that's useful. Um, the effects in here, so I think they're all awesome. The bit crush, uh, the wave folding, and the drive are the ones that I use the most. And that's, um, I mean, they all 
sound good. And, you know, I wouldn't say they're terribly unique. A lot of other devices have those types of effects as well, um, but they sound good. And it's really appreciative that they're here. I will say one bit of like awkwardness if you're doing sound design on this. Like let's say I'm doing this one, make it higher frequency. Okay, so let's say this is the sound that I want to now add those effects to. If I go into that menu where I have like, say I'm trying to add a uh, bit crush to it, notice I can't make the sound anymore here because that menu is also your step editor. So basically the only way to do that without an external MIDI controller, like here I can, I can trigger the sound, right? But if you don't have anything else plugged into it, you basically have to use the sequencer as part of your sound design. So let me demonstrate that. So if I get out of here, if I'm trying to do sound number six here, let me just mute everything else. Okay, so now we're, it's only step six is playing its little sequence here. Now, when I go in here, I can change things like the bit crush and we can hear what it does. But if you don't use the sequencer, I can't hear what I'm doing, right? I'm just changing this value and I'm just guessing and I'd have to exit this menu and then tap it to hear the change, get back into it, make another change, exit, get back in. And it's pretty awkward, right? So basically you, you're kind of forced to use the internal sequencer as part of your sound design process if you want to use these types of effects. Or you have to use an external uh, MIDI controller like this that, so you can trigger the sound while you're in here. That said, these sounds are awesome. Yeah, I'd say they're, they're not really things you can tweak on the fly very easily. Um, maybe with you know external MIDI control you could, but in terms of like during a performance, I probably wouldn't be tweaking those. Um, I've also not really found any use for the, the gain boost. I'm guessing the idea is that there's certain sounds you could make on this that would just be too quiet, even if you had the level at maximum, and so you would need to gain boost them a bit. Or the opposite, some that are just kind of naturally too loud and you can reduce gain on them. I personally have never needed that, so I don't know. It's been, um, to me, it's, it's been sounding fairly balanced or when it's out of balance, I'm able to just use the level knob to compensate for that, so. That said, those, that kind of hidden menu of effects, it's a little awkward to use, but like it, is, it does sound really good. And in general, they're kind of just set it and forget it effects. Like you're gonna use them as part of the sound design process and then you're not gonna really touch them again. So that's fine. In terms of performance effects, it's the waveguide resonator, these three knobs right here. This is just kind of all you need. Um, and also if you're using the internal sequencer using step jump, uh, I think is my other favorite effect on this. Cool, so um, I already have uh, a whole separate video in which I talk about kind of the pairing of the model samples and the Volca drum. Um, and I think that's the primary way that I use this is I use the model samples to sequence it. And I also layer the sounds of these. So I've got my two layers of synthesis here, uh, plus one layer of you know whatever sample sound I have playing from here. And I really love that combo. Um, and I think that's kind of my, my recommendation for the Volca drum is like, it's worthwhile as sort of a, a percussive voice expander for some other piece of gear that you already have. Um, and I think it pairs really well with Electron, but it's gonna work with any sequencer basically. Um, and you can, it has those multiple modes, right? Where you can address each track individually on a separate MIDI channel, or you can address all tracks on a single MIDI channel and you use different MIDI note values uh, to trigger each one. So that gives you pretty much all the flexibility you could need in terms of making it work with whatever sort of external MIDI sequencer or MIDI controller you could want. Um, the kind of only limitation there is that if you're using that multi-channel mode, it has to be channels one through six. You can't specify that. It's hard coded to those. If you're using the single channel mode, you get to choose any MIDI channel, you know, between one and 16. Uh, so that, that works fine. So yeah, um, I think that's been my favorite way to use this and the way I primarily use it. Um, I think it's also a good just general source of sounds if you're looking for something to like do one shot sampling into a sampler like the black box here, or you wanna make little loops and then sample those, you know, it's good for that type of thing too. The main thing here, I think I've pretty well demonstrated um, with the little sounds that I have already made on here, the, the sound palette you get from it is distinctly digital and um, kind of, I think it tends to be a bit, a bit harsh, a bit like, maybe kind of clippy. Um, I would say clinical is a term I would use for it. Like um, if you're looking for kind of big boomy bass, or if you're looking for the kind of like that, the analog warmth and noise you get from, uh, you know, from an analog drum machine, you're not gonna find it here. This is, this is a very 
digital sound. Um, and like, I think it's cool. Um, I choose to layer it with those kind of warmer sounds. So like I will play, for example, samples of an analog drum machine here and I'll layer those with the kind of digital, kind of more harsh sounds of the Volca drum here. So I think it's really fun for that, but you do have to be into those types of sounds uh, if, you know, if that's what you want. If you're not looking for those types of sounds, well, this isn't the one for you. Um, and yeah, if you're looking for something that just gives you more ability to craft, especially those higher frequency percussive sounds, uh, you know, snares, hit, uh, hi-hats and different types of cymbals, ride cymbals, stuff like that. I think this, that's really where this thing shines. Um, it's, it's really great for that. In terms of external effects, I will sometimes run it through um, some delay if I want to, especially like a more performal, performable delay, um, if I want to just, I just like doing that with drum patterns in general. Um, but that's kind of all I do in terms of external effects. I don't do a ton else to it because I get a lot of mileage out of the waveguide resonator here. Cool. Well, I think that's about all I have to say about the Volca drum. Um, yeah, it's definitely a really fun one. Definitely one of my favorites. Um, I think it's fun as like a grab and go little self-contained thing. You know, I can have it be just like this battery powered, um, you know, with, with some headphones plugged into it and I can always have a good time. I'm not going to write full songs on this, but um, when I use it in this mode, like on the couch or on traveling or something, generally I'm more focused on creating my kits, right? I, I create drum kits, save them in here, and maybe I create patterns as a way of messing around with them and playing around, but I don't necessarily use those patterns in my music later. It's more about creating the drum kits, which I know I'm going to then sequence later from something else. Um, that's, that's my favorite way to use this, and yeah, it's definitely, definitely fun. So yeah, that's, that's all I got. Uh, hope that helps somebody out there. Have a good one.